Hey, welcome once again to another edition of our Tuesday Table Talk, Tuesday or any day. Uh, my name is Jason, lead pastor here at First Baptist, along with my co-host, uh, Brad Lewis, our worship arts pastor. Great to be with you, brother. I am glad to be with you. I love doing this with it's good. you. It's good. It's It's great. Yeah. I love it. We've got our coffee. we got our whatever, you know. So check this out. We are downstairs in our worship area where we are live on Sunday mornings in person. And so we want to welcome you in. Maybe this is your first time to table talk. Uh, we are serious and we're excited about this. It's fairly new. Uh, you're finding this on our website probably or on Facebook, YouTube, one of those platforms at least that connects you to the link that gets you here to us. Glad you found us. Brad, what are we doing here and what are the ingredients? What's Table Talk all about? Well, Table Talk is a complement to our Sunday morning teaching that we have, as Pastor Jason just said, live in this room. And what we do is we have it on our website and we also have on our website a discussion guide that we put in your hands so that you can have a, a bit of a guide, a flow, something to spend some time with, uh, with people. We recommend yeah. do it alone, but also maybe with your family, with a group. Group, maybe with your small group, you could do it at work. Say, hey, get a few folks together at lunchtime and, right. and, and talk about some of these things. Always we want to have God's Word. That's most important because that's where everything starts. And all you have to do is go to our website, fbcfo.org. And if you'll go to the top right corner where you see several things, click on watch and it'll bring up our most current series. And then when you click on that, it'll bring up the most current Sunday message. And then underneath that will be our discussion guide. And of course, you can find other table talks there as you scroll down. Love it. We'd love for you, if you weren't in person or weren't live streaming with us this past Sunday, which was June 26th, uh, 2022, uh, you, can go, you can go back and watch that entire sermon on demand or previous ones under that watch tab. We encourage you to do that. There are things in that 30 to 40 minute window that we can't talk about today. And in fact, what we would want you to do is read, like today we're in Genesis 19. We're gonna pick out just a section of that. And, and we have some talking points here. And, and there's ways that here in Table Talk, you can go a little deeper, wrestle with some things. If you get to a stopping point and you're like, man, we've, we've hit a snag. You can always reach out to us. Our goal is to come alongside to equip you. And just as Brad said, we honor this room we're in, but we honor your living room as well or your whatever room as you can be in God's Word, digging a little deeper, growing in your faith, also helping others, equipping others. And so here's where we are in our series. We are learning to walk with God. This is the current sermon series that is showcasing God's Word in Genesis 12, through Genesis 25. Believing and walking, they are different. You may say you believe in God, and that's a wonderful thing. We know that faith is very, very important. But think about the difference when it comes to walking versus believing. Walking is harder when it comes to the, to the surrender, to the flexibility, the vulnerability, the willingness to say, God, not only do I believe you, but, but I want to follow you. I want to be in relationship. I want you, so to speak, to take me by the hand. We see that pictured in the life of Abraham, just a human being, God teaching him to walk with these greater promises in mind, God teaching Abraham to walk with him. Here's where we are in chapter 19. We're going to set up a few things. That, that walking is hard. And, and here is an opportunity where uh, Abraham has a nephew named Lot, and he loved Lot like a son. He loved Lot. In fact, back in chapter 14, when Lot had moved to Sodom, Lot gets kidnapped by four kings from the east. Abraham hears about the kidnapping, and he goes directly getting involved with his fighting men. He had 318 of his camp, Abraham did, and they went led by God. God fought with them because the odds were against them, but he rescues Lot Literally, he rolls up his sleeves to get directly involved to rescue his nephew that he loves so much. But as you dig into chapter 19, there's an interesting contrast that Abraham, even though Lot had moved back to Sodom, and everybody that loved Lot would say, that's no good place for you, man. You don't need to be living in Sodom. Everybody knew that. Abraham knew that. And Abraham also knew from last week, chapter 18, God was going to destroy Sodom. So Lot's in harm's way. He's right there at the, in the bull, bullseye of the target. And yet, we don't see Abraham getting directly involved. He's praying. 
He's hoping. He's pleading with God. But he seems to be leaving it in God's hands. And so how do we explain the difference of, of when, when we're walking with God, when we get involved to help others, we want to minister to others, we want to be God's hands and feet. Here are some considerations that we took away from chapter 19. First of all, when it comes to that other person, God loves them more. And you think about it, as much as God loves us, God loves that other person more than you do. And it's interesting, sometimes God needs to tap us on the shoulder and say, you know what? Jesus came from heaven to earth. He died for that person as much as he died for you. God loves that other person that you want to help even more than you do. God has plans for them. You think about sometimes how we want to get involved and help people the way we want to. Sometimes we think we have great plans, and we may, but God's plans are always greater. So when you're involved with someone, are you trying to line them up to walk with you or to walk with God? And finally, God's authority, and that's where we're going to stop and camp out just for a moment. Uh, God's authority, that whoever you're trying to help or get involved with, let's say it's Abraham to Lot. Man, who did Lot really belong to? It was Abraham's nephew, and Abraham raised him kind of like a son, so to speak, but who did Lot really belong to? Lot belonged to God. And so, Brad, you know, open this up a little bit where we camp out on God's authority and how that impacts our involvement, how we do ministry. Absolutely. You know, when, when you were preaching this yesterday, Pastor Jason, um, it, was, it really struck my heart that, that that's something that we have. We need to make sure we're surrendered to God's authority yeah. because God always knows best and God's way is always going to be better than our way. And, and more than we could ask or imagine is his. But we have to realize that as believers in Christ, we walk in God's authority. Yeah. Uh, just like an, an ambassador would be, you and I are called to be ambassadors mm -hmm. for Christ. And, and if that's the calling on us, the mantle, think of an ambassador for a country that that, in a sense, they represent that country. Or um, we know the term power of attorney. Mm -hmm. And basically what that is, is where if you've been given power of attorney, you have the authority to make certain decisions for the person you've been given that for. Mm -hmm. Well, God has given us as believers that mantle, that calling, that authority to act on his behalf, but yeah. we have to make sure that we're so walking with Christ, that our walk with God is so consistent and so powerful that we're not acting on our own, but we're acting as God would act, as Christ would act. As believers, guess what? We have the power to pray in Jesus' name. It's not a tagline right. that we pray a prayer and at the end go, and in Jesus' name, amen. But what that means is we are speaking to God because of what Christ has done for us. We can stand in his throne room right. and make requests because of what Jesus has done for us. In Jesus' name, God, I'm coming to you. Not only that, we can stand against uh, uh, the evil uh, of the world because God says that we have his authority to be able to overcome those things. Being in, in, in God's authority, carrying that, that mantle, that calling, it's, it's a powerful thing, but it's not something that we just throw around lightly. To use it well, we have to walk with God oh so closely so we know his heart and do his will. Man, that's good stuff. And that really gives us some insight and walking with God, and also this reality of being his hands and feet, the, the responsibility, the privilege, the opportunity. And so as you go through this guide, begin to think about how does this impact your prayer life, the way you pray for other people, the way you determine and the manner and degree, how you size up and shape, how God wants you to get involved, because our walk with him is going to connect us with other people. Right. We hope that's doing that for you right where you are today or very soon, uh, even in sharing in moments like this, that you can be that influence, but it's always got to be God's way. Here's what happens. If, if we make it about us, man, our love is, is limited. We get burned out. We get frustrated with people. We're, we're disappointed. I mean, you're going to see so much in the patience of God that's greater than our own. His plans are greater. And think about how it frees you up. When you know God's in control, you don't have to be. And especially that person you're wanting to help, you can't control them. They don't belong to you. They belong to God. And so a lot of good things to really chew on. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read the Scripture. Just simply here in chapter 19, we're going to look at verses 15 to 22. Uh, Pastor Brad's going to pray over us, and then it's yours uh, to take, to dig in, to maybe to invite others to 
to dig into this with you. So we set it up where God has promised that judgment is coming on Sodom and Gomorrah. He sends angels ahead to engage with Lot, and that's where we pick up. In fact, they had spent the night. If you dig into all of chapter 19, you'll find out, man, Lot had some weaknesses. He was a sinner. And just like us, there was nothing righteous about him that deserved or earned God's grace. But look at the love of God and the grace of God here as we read these verses. This is Genesis 19, beginning in verse 15. As morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the men, these angels that were taking on human form, these men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand. Boy, that's a picture of, of them taking a lot. Like, you, wanna, you think your plans are better? God knows better. And he's leading them by the hand, literally here. He takes the family by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. And as they brought him out, one said, escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, Oh no, my lords, behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills, lest the disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. And the angel said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. You need to escape there quickly, for I can do nothing. There's God's authority there. Even the angel leaving room for God to work. His plan, his authority. Angel says, I can do nothing till you arrive there. And therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar, which means a little town or a little space, a little city. So dig into this in chapter 19 and think about what's going on. You can go back and watch the full sermon if that will help you. Reach out to us to come alongside if that will help you. That's our heartbeat is to share these moments. So Pastor Brad's going to pray over us, and uh, we will hand this over to you. Father in heaven, thank you that we can come before you because of yeah. what Jesus did for us. Yeah. And I pray that the words in your word, mm. I pray that the words on the discussion guide, Lord, I pray that the words you implant into our spirit will be transforming, that we will find ourselves confronted by you and your principles, and we will turn every area of our lives to you. Make us different, Lord. We want to walk with you. We want to be consistent in our walk with you. We want to be able to know what you are doing and make sure that we're not getting ahead of you, make sure that we're not doing our own plans rather than yours, and also make sure we're not just sitting back and doing nothing. Lord, we want to be in step with you as we walk with you, as we minister to others. So use us, change us, transform us. Thank you for this opportunity. Jesus, our Lord, we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, we are confident and excited about what God's doing here and the content and the word that he is giving. Uh, it is good. We believe that, man. And here's the thing. We live in a culture that's filled with all kinds of content. So how do we get this word to where people need it the most? You can help us. Share the word on what we're doing here. Share these things if it's on social media or however. And listen, help us get the word to where it needs to get it. Maybe that's just to the friends, neighbors, family around you. We would love to be able to be that influence to see God working. We want to be his hands and feet right where you are and beyond. And so we can't wait to see how God works in your life through these things. And go to our website, fbcfo.org. Right after this, you will find information on how to do that. Otherwise, get the guide, dig in, have a great time, wrestle and grow and uh, we will see you on the other side. God bless.